again, I want to say thank you for joining us. And if you turn uh, to Matthew 11, and, and before, but before we go there, if you'll just stand and let's say it this year's theme together, and we'll read the scripture standing in honor of the word. Our theme for First Assembly this year, time to live. Say it with me. Time to live in 2013. Being who we've never been, doing what we've never done, seeing what we've never seen. And the scripture for this year is Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or think according to his power that works in us. How many of you know he wants to work in you and he wants to work in me? Praise the Lord. And if you go to Matthew chapter 11, I believe it is time to live, to live out the word, be the person God wants us to be and allow him to work through us to make a difference in others. Amen? We're on Mission Possible uh, this morning. And we've been preaching our mission statement uh, for, for First Assembly. And uh, Matthew 11 kind of ties into that. Verse, chapter 11, verse 25. Are you there? It says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast, thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and this is Jesus speaking. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he whomsoever the Son will reveal. Jesus is letting us know again in this scripture that if we're going to know God the Father, he's going to be revealed through Jesus. You still have to come through Jesus. Amen. And then the next verse says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, thank you for your word. It's already anointed. God, now to anoint our ears and hearts to receive and continue to move in this place in our lives, we pray, and we give you thanks. And everyone said amen and amen. I'm going to let you go ahead and be seated. These verses are an invitation from the Lord for us to follow him and become his disciple. He said, learn of me. Learn of me. Now, if you'll put the mission statement up for me now. He said, learn of me. Here's our mission statement at First Assembly. First Assembly of God exists to worship God according to the principles of his word, to encourage fellowship and godly relationships among the church body, to disciple every believer, and to equip each one for evangelism. We as a church really are on a mission. Amen? We have a vision. We have vision. We have a, a vision state that we try to pull everything back to in our church, but we also are on a mission. Today is mission possible about discipleship and evangelism. Our mission is three-part. It's to, to worship God according to the principles of His Word, it's to encourage fellowship and godly relationships. Just preached that last week. Also, and it's to disciple every believer and equip for evangelism. And every one of us need to be discipled. Amen. Right? Every one of us needs to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I had to become a disciple, a follower and a disciple, before I could ever teach and preach and minister. Can you say amen to that? We are on a mission. Much of my calling along with the other preachers, teachers in our church, is to help people become a disciple of Jesus Christ. If we just have church and have a good time and clap our hands and sing and go home, but people don't grow, then we have missed a lot of what God wants to happen in our church. Can you say amen to that? He wants us to go beyond the, the, the singing, the clapping, and the preaching he wants us to be discipled. So we are on a mission. The word disciple in the New Testament in the Greek just simply means a learner, a pupil. The word disciple comes from the Greek word that means discipline or learn. How many of us have already found out that if we are going to really serve the Lord and be the quote, the Christian, grow in, as, in our Christian life, that we really have to discipline ourselves? Yeah. Has anybody ever had difficulty making the time, taking the time to pray like you ought to? 
Have you ever found it difficult at times getting in your schedule the time you need to read the Word and spend time with God? We all have busy lives. We all have things that can pull at us and tug at us, and they do. And it seems like with all the conveniences and things that we have today, it would be, we'd have more time. But it seems like with all the conveniences, all we do is make more time to work more. Can anybody relate to that besides Jason Powell over here on the left? <laughs> So a learner, a disciple, a learner, a pupil. The word disciple in the Living Webster Dictionary says it's a follower of a particular teacher, any follower of Jesus, any follower of Jesus. So we have to, if we're going to become a disciple, we have to be people who know how to follow. If you ever want to be a leader in the ministry or in the church, you have to follow first. Follow the Lord's leadership. Follow the leadership that's set up over us. And then he can use us in the ministry. John 3, 16. How many of you know John 3, 16? Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16 is an invitation from God for us to be disciples, to be, be, become a follower of Jesus Christ. Revelation twenty two seventeen is an invitation. It says, Let him that is thirsty come. Whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely, just come. So again, an invitation to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 21 in the King James it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Again, he's telling us what will happen in our life, but he's also given us an invitation to become a disciple. In both the Old Testament and New Testament, over and over again, God extends the invitation to us to come and follow him and become his disciple. It feels good to know Jesus, and it feels even better to follow him. Because where and whenever we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's just the beginning of a brand new walk and a brand new life. And He wants to take us beyond the altar experience to a life where we walk in the Spirit and follow Him. In Matthew eleven twenty-five, 25, that as we began to read, it said, At this time. So I did a little research to understand what he's talking, they were talking about. At this time... See, at this time in Scripture, Jesus' more popular days were coming to a close. He'd been experiencing popularity and all the crowds coming, but now his popularity was beginning to wane and opposition against him was increasing. So when he's talking to us about coming to him when we're burdened and heavy laden, he's losing his popularity with man. So our first point is this. While experiencing increasing opposition, Jesus was thinking of you and me. Popularity was waning. Opposition was increasing. He knew the cross was coming. He knew there's going to be suffering ahead. How about you rather be popular than hated? Now come on, be honest. See, you, you know Jesus didn't care about the popularity. He just wanted people to know his Father come into relationship with Him. See, this is where true discipleship begins. I can almost hear Jesus say, Come to me, you who are burdened down, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me. Learn who I am and find rest for your soul. Is there anyone in the house today that has discovered that the more you learn about Jesus... And the more you allow him to work in your life, have anyone here discovered that there is more of a peace and a rest in your life? He really does that for us, doesn't he? These two statements, learn who I am and find rest for your soul. But just those two statements, are, are, they're great. To me, they're powerful. Find rest for your soul. Learn who Jesus is. Find rest. You know there's a lot of people looking for rest. They're looking for rest emotionally. 
They're looking for health in their bodies. They're looking for relationships that are satisfying. So many of us have had difficulty in relationships. We're afraid to trust anyone else again. We're looking for someone to love us. We're looking for someone to help us feel better about ourselves. Jesus said uh, in verse 29, take my yoke upon me. I realized that there was more to it than, than, uh, than just learning of him and finding rest for your soul. I discovered also verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. So there's another part of this that we need to consider. Take my yoke. A yoke was used to harness two animals together in such a way as to get the maximum pulling power and the maximum pulling strength. And probably in this area, there's a lot of us. How many of you have been raised on a farm or worked on a farm at some time or another? Raise your hand throughout. Look at that. The majority of the congregation has been either worked on a farm, uh, grown up on a farm. I've got a feeling that a lot of our, our children and grandchildren would probably be better off if they were raised on a farm today. I really do. Cut out the, the video games. Let them build tree houses. Play in the woods. Feed the animals. And scoop a little of you know what. <laughs> a yoke harnessed two animals together for greater pulling strength. The stronger animal would get the heavy end of the load. Jesus was saying, become my student. Learn who I am. Become a follower and a worker with me. Because 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, we are workers together with God. So as we work in this, these Christian circles, as we work in the church, as we witness to others, listen, we are workers with God, not just First Assembly or First Baptist or First Methodist. We are workers together with God. And what better partner can you have than for the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God himself, to be on your team? So Jesus is saying, come learn of me. He's saying, my burden is light. He's saying what I require of you is light because he, Jesus, takes the heavy part of the burden. Did you get that? Jesus takes the heavy part of the burden. There's a song we sing sometimes, burdens are left at Calvary. Have you ever brought a burden to the Lord? That weight you were carrying to the altar? And you cried and you broke and you just knew God was working and when you got up, you picked it up and took it back with you? Or you feel so free, but when you get home, you realize that you're allowing that same burden to weight you down. Jesus is telling us in this scripture, He takes the heavy part. He takes the heavy part of, our, of your burdens. He takes the heavy part of what comes against you. Jesus already paid a price on the cross. He's already taken the brunt of the attack of the devil against your life. He's already taken the brunt of attack of physical ailment on the cross. Jesus has already taken the brunt of all that and he's wanting us to know that if we will walk with him and serve him and become a disciple, our burden will become light because he carries the major part of the load. I'm telling you now, you can't live for Jesus without a relationship with Jesus and you can't go through some of the things in life and have a real peace in your heart without a relationship with the Lord. He really does lift the burden. Yes, yes. Yes. Now there are those who know the scriptures who have studied and learned a lot about Jesus but yet they don't follow him. I've known people over the years that could quote the Bible, could even do counseling from the Scripture, but who weren't serving the Lord. But they grew up in church. They have it inside of them, in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit. And though they're not serving the Lord and they're out there doing their own thing, living in sin, that's still inside of them and people come to them for counsel and they, they share counsel from the Word and they're not even living for Jesus. God's word has power. 
And some people have received help, though that man wasn't living for Jesus because they believed in what the Scripture says. But what better if we are living for Him? You see, it's the one who follows Jesus, living by biblical principles, principles who has made Jesus the authority over them and their home. They're the disciples. We know the Lord's Prayer when He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We're saying, Lord, I want your authority in my life. I want your authority in my children. I want your authority over my home. As we pray that, Lord, we're asking for your authority over the United States of America from the White House all the way to the governors and and mayors and and city managers where we live. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We're inviting him to be his authority. 2 Timothy 3, 7 says, though, that there are those who are always learning but never understanding the truth. So there's people that can quote the Word but never let the Word change their mind, never let the Word change their heart, never allow the Word to get inside of them so that they can step into the plan and the purpose that God has for their life. And there's been many people who've tried to search the Scriptures and find everything they could about this Word to discredit Jesus Christ, God the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, and to destroy Christianity. And in their search, there's been numbers of people, as they began to search, the Holy Spirit would deal in those that came to destroy Christ, just like Saul of Tarsus, have come to know Jesus and are now preaching the gospel. I tell you, this word is powerful, and it will work, and sometimes it'll work when people are trying to disprove it. (laughs) Understanding really comes when a person becomes a follower of Jesus. Understanding comes when we live by what we've been taught from the Word of God. You have to step out on what you know and you've discovered that He knows. And as we step out on that, understanding comes. Part of our mission as a church is to make disciples of every believer. Part of our mission is to help them learn who Jesus is and see them come to Him and follow Him. Let me make it a little more personal. It's you and your spiritual well-being that we are concerned about. We're not wanting to just fill up the church with people so we can sit out more chairs. We want to fill up the church with people whose lives are being changed by the power and the Word of God. It's your spiritual well-being. It's you that we're wanting to help. Even those that are watching by internet today, those that go online and watch, I believe God uses these messages and this time in His house to speak to people who aren't here, but where God shows up where they are. It's you we want to help find God's answers. It's you who want to help through the struggles. I've had plenty of struggles, still have some, anyone else. I know what it's like for somebody to run to the car when I'm broken and torn up and I try to get to the car and get going before anybody can get to me. You ever done that before? I couldn't get out fast enough. I mean, I was a Christian, teenager, but boy, I was tired of some stuff and things were getting to me and I was discouraged and I walked out that night saying, I don't even want to come back. You know, how, how many of you... Anybody's flesh ever get in the way like that besides mine? And another man, young teenage guy, a couple of years older than me, ran to my car, took the keys out of my hand, sat in that car and talked to me and walked me through what I was going through and helped me to stay in there and continue to serve the Lord. It's you we want to help as you make the authority in your life Jesus Christ. All of us have to make him Lord. We sing the song, Jesus Christ is Lord, but is he really? We need to make him Lord of our lives. Now I want to take a sidebar. Is that okay? Outward appearance does not always reveal what's going on on the inside. 
some of us do a pretty good job about going on and not letting people know what we go through. Am I telling you the truth today? What we see does not always reveal the anguish that is going on inside of a person. Guarantee you there's people here today that look nice, that smell nice. You've come to church, but you're in torment in your heart. You're going through some things and some struggles you need help with. And I'm telling you, he already knows. We can look on the outside and people look fine. They'll be in the services lifting their hands along with everybody else. Worshiping. By the way, we shouldn't just worship when we feel like it. We should worship because he's worthy. And here they are standing, worshiping, sometimes tears in worship. And while the hands are lifted and the hands are being clapped and the tears are flowing, and we just see people, all this happening around us, while at the same time he or she is fighting to stay alive. The devil convinces us sometimes, I'm going to church today, but you know what? Nothing's going to help me. God wants you to know he knew you were coming and there's somebody here that can help you and his name is Jesus. Here we are, we, people struggle to have strength and to stand in the midst of sickness, of pain, of suffering, sometimes struggling with sin that they just can't seem to break away from, a sin that doesn't want to let go, and we don't see the struggle inside while the hands are lifted and while people are, are worshiping the Lord, but I want you to know God knows, He cares, he, He's concerned about what you feel inside, what you're wrestling with in your mind, in your hearts, in your thoughts. He knows the struggle at home with your children, with your husband, your wife. He knows the financial burden. He knows every bit of that. He knows how the devil attacks us and tries to keep us from being committed to Jesus. He knows all of that. And when it's hard to worship and sometimes we may just get in a form and join in because others are. Listen, at least you're here. You're where God can speak. You're where God can work. You're where God can move. And the Lord wants us to respond to the moving of His Spirit and to the words of His song and to the word when it's preached because only He can really reach inside and help us get rid of some of the heartache and pain and suffering that we're carrying. People need to know that they can get up again you need to know you can get up again has anybody ever fallen since you believed when we fall we disappoint Jesus we disappoint ourselves and we feel so bad about our falling that we feel like everybody in the world knows but the most important two that know is you and him, Jesus. The Bible tells us, this has to do with the discipleship, by the way. I can't just take, stand up here and preach one, two, three, discipleship because discipleship is helping people. Letting God work through us to help people. That's what discipleship is about. And if you go to Proverbs 24 and 16 in the NIV, it says, for though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again, but the wicked are brought down to calamity. Listen, it pays to know Jesus. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to fail and you're going to come short. There's times we're going to fall back into sin, but we don't have to stay in that sin we fall in. We need to shake ourselves, get back up. He said the righteous man will get up seven times. He'll just keep getting up, keep getting up, keep getting up, keep getting up until what? Until he doesn't fall into that trap anymore. Not a one of us that can point a finger and judge someone else because of what they've done. Because if everyone knew your hidden sin, my hidden sins of the past, brothers and sisters, they'd have a hard time having confidence in either you or I. Amen. 
1 John 1, 9 was written for believers when he said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He was writing that to a group of believers. That's no excuse to sin, is it? In 1 Kings 18, Elijah stood before the people face to face with the false prophets of the false god Baal. Here's what he said. Why are you hung up between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. In other words, don't get stuck. You know Jesus is God, so just get up again. Come on. You know he's God, so just go ahead and get up. The devil's not God. He's the God of this world for a while. But the devil's not God. He doesn't have authority. He can't be everywhere at one time. Only God is God. Only God is omnipresent. Only God can change your life. So quit halting, halting between two opinions. You know God's God. Let's just go ahead and let him in our lives and let him lead and let him work and let him free us. Just get up and follow him. Secondly, discipleship involves getting settled and established in Jesus. In 1 Peter 5 and 10, 1 Peter 5 and 10, it says, And the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong and firm (laughs) and steadfast. Isn't that something? God wants us to be settled. He wants us to be established in Him. God wants us to find the church He wants us in, get settled, become a part, and let Him use us. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight in the King James. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Anything you do for Him is not in vain, even if no one else recognizes what you and I do. You know what? He recognizes. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that are serving the Lord and praying and working that never get a chance to stand on this platform. There's a lot of people paying a price that we don't recognize. But God recognizes them. It's not in vain, he said. We are on a mission to help you get there. (laughs) These verses are who you are when in Christ. A student, a learner, a follower of Jesus. Discipleship is learning about Jesus and then following him and following his teachings. You'd think that would be simple, but it's not always simple because of the struggle with our flesh, the struggle with the past, the struggle with with the devil trying to bring the sin back to, to, to pull us back again. But somehow, somehow we need to follow him and get settled. John 8, 31. John 8, 31. In... in uh, King James says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. I tell you, it feels good to be free. It feels good to be free. I feel free because he set me free. I can stay free as I keep bringing things to him. There are many things that, we ev- that are evidenced in the life of a true disciple of Jesus. And real quickly, I'll just name a few. One of them is assurance. Assurance. You know you have a relationship with Jesus. You know that you're saved. There's got to be that no-so in your heart. There's got to be that assurance. This assurance will carry you through eternity, not just while you're here. Another one is Declaration. You begin to talk about Jesus and what he's done for you. A a disciple, one of the evidences is to talk about Jesus more than you do yourself. You talk about who he is and what he's done and what he can do for others that you talk to. 
Another one is possession. We really do possess the things He has for us. See, you walk in the peace, the hope, and the joy that comes from knowing Jesus. I don't know how to explain the joy that's there sometimes when I'm going through the hardest th times of my life. I just know it's there. I just know it's real. And I just know it comes from Him. Possession. And then there's demonstration. God's power is seen in your life. Power to overcome. Power to be victorious. Power to be who God says you are. He didn't, say, he didn't deal with our heart to come to an altar and get saved in the car at the house or wherever we come to Him to say, okay, you're in now. You're on your own. Nah. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He also said He'd send His Holy Spirit to fill us and to help us. He said He'd give us the power to overcome and to be victorious. 1 Peter 5, verse 7 through 11. 1 Peter 5, 7 through 11 in the NIV. Cast all your anxiety. King James says cares. Anybody have any cares? Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. You're not the only one. Verse 11. To him power forever and ever. Amen. You're not the only one. You ever feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through? Boy, if people only knew, Brother Bracken, the suffering I'm enduring, the struggle I'm having, if people only knew, somebody else does know. There are others going through the same thing. We just don't know. And I think he wants us to be aware of that so we don't get on our pity parties and we realize that others are struggling with the same thing you do, same thing I do. We are on a mission. This mission is possible. Our mission is to disciple every believer. There's all kinds of discipleship opportunities in the churches in this area. There's all kinds of discipleship opportunities here at First Assembly. There's senior ministries. There's Tuesday ladies Bible studies. There's Monday night for those with life control and circumstances. There's Friday night men's ministry and Friday Bible study with Faye McGee with men and women. There's Sunday morning and evening preaching and teaching. There's Sunday children's church as well as Wednesday night children's ministries and youth and adult table talk connections. There's, there's also membership classes and there's other things uh, for special training and for new converts. There's all kinds of opportunities for people to be discipled, to grow and to learn who Jesus is and to become who He wants us to be. And I'm still growing. Are you? There's more. He has the rest of the story for your life. As I draw to a close, as opposition increased against Jesus, we were, on, we were on his mind. He wants each of us to settle, get established, and be strong in the Lord. This mission really is possible. Oh, you can get up again. Anybody need to hear that? You can get up again. Equipping for evangelism, I don't have time to preach that today. But it's part of our mission. So let me read one scripture that connects us with that. And that's John 4, 35. I believe it is in the King James Version. Say not there are yet four months and then comes harvest. Don't say later we'll reach out to people who, who need help and need Jesus. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Look on the fields, for they are white already for the harvest today. People are waiting. People are ready for someone to come to them 
and help them. There's people here that are struggling this morning. Some have reached out to you from our church. Some have reached out to you from other places, and there's still a struggle. Listen, don't you dare give up. God knows what he's doing. He has you in the palm of his hand, and if you allow him, he will continue to work. If you'll stand, please, as we go to Matthew 11, 28 to 30, again. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy, heavy, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You'll find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Not only are people waiting out there for somebody to talk to them and to help them, to say, I love you, to reach out to them. But today there are people here with cares and concerns and needs. He said, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. When I was thinking about discipleship, I think when I've preached before, I've gone more along the line of discipleship and just scriptures about in a, in a different way but I really felt like the Lord wanted me to talk about discipleship in this way that every one of us need to get connected every one of us needs to grow amen every one of us need others to help us in our walk with the Lord we are on a mission at First Assembly sometimes I feel like we do it well sometimes I feel like we've not done too well or, or at least speaking of myself but even when we feel like we've not done so well at trying to disciple others we can't quit. We have to continue to go on and to keep doing it. So people are here today with needs, concerns, and cares. And the Lord is saying, bring it to me. I'll take the heavy part. I'll take the heavy part. Have you ever brought something to the Lord and you were so heavy you just couldn't hardly stand it? But really you felt a release after you brought it to Him. And it's like the burden was really lifted. And it really was. Hear Jesus say today, I will take the heavy part.